Hello, I'm Dr. Daria Brzezinski, and this is What Wise Women Want, here on Charlottesville CPA TV, public television on Comcast Channel 13. Every week we bring you shows that uh, for all kinds of topics, and you can find all of our shows on whatwisewomenwant.com website. Wise is spelled with a Z, by the way. And uh, this week we have, I have been um, upset uh, myself about the political climate. And I thought, wow, what a great idea for a show. Let's talk about people's health related to the political climate. But we're gonna do something a little bit different, a little bit different bent, and talk about it through the eyes of astrology. So I have today four astrologers here. And to my left is uh, Lynn Coiner. Yes. To her left is Molly Gutier. To her left is Cheryl Hopkins. And to her left is Robin Fink. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So um, to start off, you know, astrology is an interesting um, subject. And so would you give us a little bit of uh, background information about you and how or why you got into astrology, if you would? And so, Lynn, would you mind starting? You know, I started reading uh, Glamour magazine. I'm very old. <laughs> so I've been a professional astrologer for this summer will be 51 years. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, there wasn't a lot of astrology back in the 60s, early 60s, but there was Glamour Magazine, and my son and Ascendant are in early degrees of Virgo, so when they would do the solar houses, the predictions would always work. And I said, well, if, if a ma fashion magazine can predict for me, what about a horoscope magazine? So I started buying horoscope, uh, Dell horoscope, uh, American astrology. And then when I was in college, I discovered that the American Federation of Astrologers was behind the Capitol. And I went and had a reading for myself. And I was so blown away. I thought, well, maybe she investigate you, but the FBI was staying in this woman's home <laughs> when they would come for schooling. I said, well, if they're good enough for the FBI, then it has to be legitimate. Uh, so that's really how I got started. And it was a tool for interacting with other people. I was an only child living on a farm. And so everyone likes to talk about themselves. So it was, it really helped with my social skills. Uh -huh. And I enjoy talking to people and problem solving. Excellent. Okay, Molly. Well, Lynn started with Glamour Magazine and I started with the little scrolls that you would buy at the convenience stores <laughs> when I was young, like a preteen and a teenager. And I've always been interested in that, but I never really got it. And after I finished college, I found out that, that a local astrologer was teaching courses, teaching classes close to where I was in Austin, Texas. And I got into his class and he became my mentor for about 15 years. And that's how I became an astrologer. He really convinced me that I could do it and that I could do readings for people and then I was good enough and and so I had a lot of encouragement and that was what really great. just out of curiosity what was your degree my I, I have a BA in history uh-huh and, and so it, you really have to make your own path when you graduate undergrad with a BA in history okay Cheryl well similarly for Lynn it was glamour for me it was cosmopolitan <laughs> <laughs> I used to read it faithfully every month. First section I'd go to is the astrological column. And I would read it, and some months it made sense, and most months it didn't. So roughly about 12, I decided, you know what, this, this is, there's nothing here. This, I'm not going to read this anymore. So fast forward, oh, 10 plus years, and uh, I was gifted a session uh, from my mother of all people, because I would have never thought that, she was so blown away by the session she had, she just knew I wanted to go. Well, I'm a Virgo like Lynn, very skeptical. I went and it was the, the thing that changed my life. I could not understand how this woman knew me, how she knew what language in my head. 
and I kept asking her, how do you know this? And she kept saying, it's in the chart. And I'm like, what does that mean? I mean, we had the same back and forth. What does that mean? Uh, she also said she felt that I could be an astrologer, which I dismissed out of hand because I knew my career path. And I was, which in the, was? I was in the apparel business in New York. I was intending to be probably at that time the first black sales, female sales manager of a, a company that I could stand. And so I dismissed it. And the way things worked out, uh, one day I just woke up and realized this is supposed to be the path. Mm. And I studied with her because she happened to have decided she was going to teach. She became my mentor. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Robin? Well, isn't it interesting? We're sitting at a table of lots of Virgos, Virgo sons. I'm a Virgo son, oh, too. Really? So I don't know. There might be something of interest there that we could uh, talk about a little later. But I, um, I didn't start that early. I, uh, I had a career as a nurse. Uh, worked for a number of years um, uh, for the UVA health system and had the good fortune of working with people, with patients, where I would walk into a room and I would feel things and I couldn't understand what I was feeling. So my interest in astrology really came from my other senses. It came from my um, being more of an empath to others. And I thought there's got to be something to this. So being uh, this Virgo son that we've just been talking about, one of the things about that is to be very logical about how you go about looking at things. And I was looking for patterns of, my, of how my life should go. And this sort of came up as one of those things that I never looked back. I had the great good fortune to meet someone very similarly as these other ladies did, who I've, uh, has become a mentor to me. And it's made all the difference in the world in my life and in changing, helping, hopefully, changing other people's lives. Excellent. Okay, so I've had many astrology readings, some from people at this table, and, uh, you know, the jargon, and, and I'm an educator, so I know everybody, every career choice has its political, I mean, it's jargon, and so, it's a little difficult for some of us, you know, your sun is rising, your moon is this, you're, you know, you're in Libra, you're in Virgo, your 12th house is here. Um, can you just give us a lay, for people who um, get confused like I do with all of the jargon, can you just help us to anybody who, who feels like they want to explain a little bit about, um, you know, all of that stuff <laughs> for us, if you would. Anybody feel like they can do that? Well, I, I think it's it, it can be daunting for people. And because if we start walking down a road with acronyms and words that are meaningful in our, with another colleague, and I use my hands, so I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do so. It, it really leaves people at the table not knowing what's happening. I find for me, and, and you ladies, please, I'd love to hear what you think as well, but to use the idea of energy and the idea of the energies of the certain placements of your planets, let's say, on your, I call it my mandala. It's your circle, the circle of life, the circle of where the planets show for you. So if you were just going to even be talking about planets or signs, I mentioned earlier, we a number of us did that we were Virgo. To speak to that without using that word would mean to, to use adjectives, adverbs, mm. ways of uh, pieces of energetic experience that sort of show us that. I'm going to use an example, Pluto or let's say Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. Jupiter has this expression, this energy of being expansive and generous and open and growth oriented, but it can also be this, oh my goodness, I've blown the balloon up too far and now it's going to pop. That would be how I might suggest mm. to someone, I wouldn't even maybe use Jupiter, I would just speak to those energies. Okay, so what's the difference between planets and what was the other thing? Signs. Signs, Signs and, houses. and houses. When you go to an astrologer, they're going to create a chart for you, a birth chart. And the birth chart is a map of where everything was located at the time of your birth relative to the zodiac signs which are kind of out there in space and also relative to the rotation of the earth so um your sounds chart, more like astrophysics 
It, it is a little bit. The, your chart is a circular map. If the Earth was on it, it would be in the middle. And it has all the planets. It has the Sun and the Moon and Mercury and Venus and Mars and, and all of those planets in it. And the location of those planets by the signs gives us information. The location of the planets by the houses. And the houses are, was, okay, you have the sun in Virgo. Was Virgo on the eastern horizon or the western horizon? Was it over your head or was it under your feet? And that too carries meaning. So there's this whole map of all these symbols that carry this meaning. And that is what an astrologer is going to read when you sit down with that. And if they're a good astrologer, they're going to translate it into English so that you can understand without all the jargon kind of getting in the way. Okay. So I like to think of it, or I like to ex explain to clients or anyone I'm talking to, is that um, there are four pillars in interpretation. So you have the planets, which are aspects of the human psyche. So each one of the planets correlates with some aspect of human nature, okay? You have an identity, that's the sun. You have a basic nature that's very sensitive, very inward looking, very feeling oriented, that's the moon, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have the signs that they're in. The signs could be expressed as styles of expression. So the planet, that part of you, your identity, expressing through the sign, a particular form of expression. So Virgo is one form of expression. Aries is another form of expression. Libra is another form of expression. Then you have the relationship of those planets to each other, how they're sending their light to each other. And then you have the houses where they're placed. The houses are areas of life. So that planet, that part of you expressing in this particular way, in this particular area of your life. That's how I like to give a general sense of what it means. Sounds like I would need a PhD to <laughs> study <laughs> astrology. Okay. So, you know, what I, 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 I think I understand a little bit about how it works and and thank you for that because that i think the, the more mundane explanations that you've been given in terms of energies and characteristics mm -hmm. and things is so much more helpful you know than oh you've got this and you know, rising and setting and all that and you know you use the excuse earlier oh she's a libra you know whatever that means so now i want to talk about it in terms of you know um we started off this conversation by telling uh, by telling the audience that I want to talk about this political climate. And it's just, I mean, in the last couple of years, uh, I feel like my, it's really hard not to watch the television and keep, I'm a political junkie and I've always been. And, but now it's like, I feel like it's sucking the air, the energy out of me. And so, and I keep asking Cheryl all the time, Cheryl, what's going on? You know, please tell me what's going. Is, is this insanity going to stop soon? What do the signs say? And so I'd like to talk about, you know, our experiences in relationship to the political climate and um, how that relates to astrology. So does anybody want to tackle that? I'll tackle it because I had post-traumatic stress disorder the day after the election when I woke up and saw what had happened. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was going on, there are certain uh, uh, planets have been in signs called cardinal signs. That's Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn. And there are What's a, a cardinal sign? Well, these are more action-oriented. Ah. And in medical astrology, uh, it has to do with the, uh, certain hormones in the body, the adrenals, what happens when you have aspects involving these signs, uh, stress occurs. Stress occurs because something in your psyche or your experiences is causing uh, the adrenals to produce cortisol. Cortisol elevates anxiety, stress, poor concentration. And so for me, knowing something about medical astrology, there are two herbs you can take that are part of the mint family. That is holy basil and lemon balm. Uh, I would take two capsules of each before going to bed, and that would lower my cortisol levels from the stress of dealing, well, I would say, when Rachel Maddow was depressed, 
then I got very, very depressed. <laughs> She's always very upbeat, but when the next day when she was so depressed. I remember when she so used to depressed. drink wine on Friday. Oh, yes. 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 And yes. upbeat and like that all went away. So I found studies in medical astrology help and I understood that this is going to go on for a while. And so doing things that uh, help the what's body a while? adjust. Um, <laughs> if you want to know political things, I, I can't say who is going to win the next election, but we always look at the inauguration chart because mm -hmm. we always know it's on a certain day in January at a certain time. Uh -huh. And this indicates the course of the next four years. Oh, God bless. There are four planets in the sign of Aquarius, and that always <laughs> yes. indicates a major shift in the cycle going from ultra conservatism to things that are more progressive. Uh, Aquarius. Are we talking about this next year? This next, next year, the election in January of 2021. So the inauguration for next year is going from conservative to progressive? Yes. How interesting. Uh, it's going to be more progressive. There'll be problems, but it will be more progressive because Aquarius is that way. You know, when uh, <gasps> there's actually hope. Uh, I, I'm just living for that inauguration <laughs> chart because back, oh, before Obama was elected, uh, a very famous financial astrologer, Bill Meridian, mm. he said that he says, oh, I can tell you Obama's going to win in the inauguration chart is the sun conjunct Jupiter in Aquarius. That's always a liberal Democrat. And that's how he knew. So I know, at least from his experience, when you have strong Aquarius in the chart, it is a the mark of a great social change, mm -hmm. uh, a shift in social attitude. It tends to be more progressive than the conservative Capricorn that we had with the last uh, inauguration. Except chart. I think it depends. All depends on how you define progressive. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. it, it can be mm -hmm. backwards progression rather than forwards progression. Mm -hmm. So that would be regressive. That oh, regressive. regressive. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes. Thank you, Thank Cheryl. You, Cheryl. Okay. Yes. Good point. My We're going forward. Yes, okay. Well, we've Excellent. been seeing so much heavy duty energy in Capricorn for a while. And one of the things I think in astrology that's so very powerful about looking at it is the idea of polarity. And when you get mm. something that's so polarly, staunchly um, structure oriented, big organization oriented, mm. um, we could even use the word stagnant. Um, and not to go down this road too far, but I want to mention the whole idea that um, it's Capricorn sort of is the old man energy. And mm. it's that standing for something that has been for such a very long time that needs to move into a new, more innovative energy like Aquarian energy or Uranus is Uranus is the is the planet of that energy. So for us to move into it. I think makes perfect sense from what you're saying, Lynn, because mm -hmm. we need to we need for the pendulum to have shifted so far this direction, mm -hmm. so that we can bounce into the innovative. So, so the pen. What were you going to say, Cheryl? Well, I was going to add to that that it's almost like you have to go all the way to the other end mm -hmm. to remember that there's a middle mm -hmm. because you've gotten yes. so far afield, which all of the Capricorn and the planets mm -hmm. that have been in Capricorn really are emphasizing, as Robin was explaining, you swinging all the way to this other end because people are feeling left out, et cetera, et cetera, and they want to be included. Uh, Aquarius is about inclusion; everyone is equal. So. It's like swinging to this end in order to remember, oh, wait, there's a middle. There's a middle way. <laughs> we gee, don't have to be extreme. Mm -hmm. We can, and, you know. Gee, I thought all the time when we were in Obama era, we were in the middle because he was, you know, no drama Obama. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought, oh, okay, the status quo, we're moving along here after, of course, all the, you know, the fiasco with the markets and everything. So, so. But the difference was, was that his very being was the breakup was the, the extreme uh, response to the status quo, his very being. Okay. You follow? Kind of, sort of. He was the first black president. Right, yes. Exactly. Okay. Just that alone. He didn't even have to do anything. He could have just stood there. Okay. Right. So how does this, re how does, you know, looking from an astrological perspective and the political climate, how does that, relate to health in some way. I mean, I know what I'm feeling, but how does that relate to health? I, I don't, I, what is the connection there? What, what you know, you started talking about stresses and things, but how, how, 
How can we predict that? How can, what are the predictors, so to speak? I'll just start. I, uh, I see the planets in certain signs that they're transiting now to produce a lot of stress, whether it's people who all of a sudden uh, the social programs are being cut back. Uh, they're having to work three jobs. Um, it, it causes a lot of stress in society. And one of the things there was a famous, uh, she was also an astrologer, Carolyn Mays, who oh, wrote yeah. Anatomy of Spirit. And she said that when society is sick, that's when you get the major health issues. Uh, like uh, um, in World War I, it was the uh, great influenza. Uh, around World War II, you had polio. But when, and then in the 50s, um, you had the discovery of a cure for polio. And also in the 80s, the economic uh, problems that were going on in the 1980s, then you had AIDS. So when a society is sick and out of balance, there will be health issues. China is very much out of balance. The persecution of people who are not pure Chinese is disgraceful. Uh, I have a friend, he and his wife moved back from China, and he said, it is getting so difficult. Uh, he said, you're on camera 24 seven. Mm. He said within a one block period, he, caught, he uh, counted 200 cameras uh, spying on people. And so when a society is We're sick, not getting that far from in the United no, States. Well, uh, w when society is sick, then you get these health issues. Uh, that are going on coming from China. And here we are with a pandemic. With a pandemic, absolutely. Wow, and, okay. And, and an extension of that uh, makes me think also is the, a lot of the clients that have come to see me are not in that, you know, next to the survival experience mm -hmm. of that, but yet the trickle down or trickle away effect is how I think many of us who feel, who live in the United States is, oh my God, we're looking at this, we're witnessing what's going on, what can I do? I can't tell you the number of people who say they feel disempowered and it's making them feel ill. You know, whether they have mm -hmm. a disease process ongoing or one might decide it's going to flourish. Um, I certainly have seen that in my medical career. But it's this idea of what can I do? What can I do? And I think that's where astrology really can play a big transpersonal role personally. Mm -hmm. I know that seems a bit odd to say it, but that if we can see how we can understand our energies um, mm -hmm. of what we came into this world with, how can we make them work for ourselves in our family units, in our work colleague units, in our community, we are doing something. And that's what I've tried to share with people as I move mm -hmm. through and work with them with their energies and how, what are we gonna look at you know, a year from now, that kind of thing. So, go ahead. I was gonna say to, to just piggyback on that um, and then listening to what Lynn said, I was just struck by the fact that, so the, the coronavirus starts in China, as you say, right. quite That's out of balance, I, yeah. right? right. Mm -hmm. And then we start to hear of things popping up in Korea, right. okay? Um, and then Iran right. and Italy. Right. And if we look at those areas, mm -hmm. with the exception of South Korea, okay, um, we have extreme right wing uh, or extreme uh, governments and ideologies that are attempting to control the people and, and people pushing back more so in Italy and of course Iran. Um, and then of course in Korea, we have this issue with um, the feminine speaking up now and attempting to be seen and to be heard um, and, and not be relegated to subservience to the male. Um, I'm sure there's some other issues going on in Korea as well. But it seems to me, as you were saying, looking at the transpersonal effects and recognizing it's a mirror for the individual and recognizing what is the issue here, the lack of wholeness, the lack of getting connected to spirit. You know, it's interesting that you're talking about this because my first thought when the virus erupted was all of a sudden now they stopped having, um, you know, all those uh, uh, people coming into the streets and objecting to, uh, you know, China and all those kinds of things. And then all of a sudden, you know, in, even in my mind, I thought, I wonder if they created this just to stop mm -hmm. all the controversy. And so I find it fascinating that you went in that direction. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, in, in what you said, um, it's, you know, it's interpersonal. We're, we're all interconnected with mm -hmm. each other. And, you know, even if I look at my own chart, um, other people have obviously different charts than I do and different, were born at different times and things like that. And so what's the, what's the, the, the trajectory? What is the path that we take even, you know, in terms of finding our own health in this political climate and dealing with the stress, how do we find our own way in the midst of having to interact? I mean, I have cl autistic clients all the time and, you know, you all have clients and we're interacting with people all the time. And so what can we do personally? How, how, how does what does what gets set in motion in terms of um, how we progress in, in terms of helping ourselves? Do you have any thoughts about that, Molly? That's that's what we look at your chart to figure out. Your chart is a wonderful map of what is likely to work for you. Okay. You know, what you are most attuned to and what your health vulnerabilities are. And of course, we're walking around with. You know, I live out in Augusta County and. Wherever I, whenever I go anywhere, always in the back of my mind, I'm thinking 60% you know, of the people in this county hate me just because of the way I vote. <laughs> you know? and that, that's Do they very, know that? No, but, oh, oh, but oh. In, my mind, I, oh. in, my, in my mind, I imagine oh, if, oh, oh, if okay. they knew me, they would. And that's just stressful. And I think that, mm -hmm. I think that there's this low level of, of anxiety that many people tune into. I, I have my chart, so I know that I'm particularly susceptible to that kind of anxiety, but I think we all process it in our own ways. And some, people's, some people may not be affected by it at all, and other people take it really, really hard. And when we look at the map of the sky today, and we kind of put that together with your birth chart, we get a really good picture of what is happening in particular for you and how you are responding to those energies. So the answer, what do you do, is very individual. But then we also have this collective experience where we have to figure out what to do with all this Capricorn. How do you respond when the world is saying you need to be the certain way or you need to completely overhaul certain structures in your life? Well, the, those are the times that we can we can see those kinds of crises forming and we can give our clients a, a sense of how they can respond to it and what are some options they have. Well, I even, you know, listening to the, the pundits talk about people who are going into the election booths and don't even know who they're going to vote for. I mean, the angst mm -hmm. is just so pervasive everywhere that people can't, people are like PTSD, people have such, um, anxiety now that they can't even make up their heads are so clouded they can't even make up their mind about who they're going to vote for because they want to vote against something or they want to vote for policies or they you know and that in itself and i know myself personally you know i have to listen to clients and others talk all the time about politics and nobody most people have no idea what my politics are because i keep my mouth shut but that doesn't help me because i don't get to express myself either but because of the nature of the work that i do i have to keep quiet you know about my political you know prospects and things like the way i vote and so you know it's like this cloud and what is that cloud? I mean, is it a cloud? Is it my imagination or no, is it? Not no, at all. No. I was just about to introduce Neptune and Pisces and you just <laughs> yeah. did a wonderful <laughs> intro. Oh, so thank okay, you. good. <laughs> when you talked about cloud. Okay, <laughs> yes. Good. Neptune uh, can cloud the perception uh -huh. whereby you think what you're seeing is real and you could be the last one to recognize that you are uh, in complete denial about what is real. Yes. Um, so it, Neptune as a symbol or as an aspect of the psyche represents the spiritual nature, the imagination. It represents illumination of, uh, of awareness and insight. The illumination though comes from a um, seeing more clearly, as I said, and moving beyond denial. So in the sign of Pisces, which is the last sign of the zodiac and the sign that we say it's most closely associated with, it, in a society, it can tend to be a time of discontent, yeah. unhappiness with the status quo. Uh, you can have a sense of confusion, 
not really knowing which way is up. Interestingly, um, if you look at the political parties, so you have the Republican Party, okay, and you look at how the uh, legislators have boxed themselves into an ever smaller, tighter mm -hmm. reality. Right. Because they are pinned between uh, responding to the whims of the executive and uh, following what their constituents want, which is fealty to the executive. So they have to be very, very careful. Uh, and therefore, everything that they've always said that they stood for, we see as morally bankrupt. They mm. don't seem to be standing for that. Right. Then we swing over to the Democratic side, and we have the Democratic establishment types running around with chicken, like chickens without heads, screaming, the sky's going to fall, the sky's going to fall, because we got this 78-year-old Bernie Sanders, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and seeming like they are prepared to once again snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory. So you see in both cases, it's sort of like unmoored from their so-called or professed beliefs and systems and not even knowing who they are anymore. Right. A Neptune time can bring that, make that a reality. And then you couple that with all the Capricorn that we've been describing here, where, you know, life is hard and difficult and you people get to a point where they adhere to saviors and extreme oh. perspectives that yeah. make no sense and have no basis in reality whatsoever, but it's as real as this table is to them. Yeah. And medically, Neptune governs infections, epidemics, sensitivity, mm -hmm. toxicity. The, mm -hmm. the, there's the Environmental Prote Protection Agency has had all its teeth yanked out. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of issues with toxicity and health effects downstream from that that we might not even recognize or realize are coming from that because tox toxicity, health issues that are caused by toxicity tend to be diagnosed as other things. Well, and also the pandemic department has been completely eliminated in, the, in, in Washington. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like we're all, it's, and even today you had the acting head of the Homeland Security being grilled by a senator and not having any answer for anything. Yep. Okay. Another example of the breakdown as represented by Neptune. Okay. Not knowing where to go for information. You had uh, Cuccinelli not knowing how to access, <laughs> not know how to Google on the CDC site where he was going to get the information he is supposed to have access to because we're the ones who would feed the information to the CDC. So you're seeing you know, on so many levels this like, what is it? The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Incompetence. There you are. And the other word that comes to mind for me and to follow on what you're saying is extreme, extremist behavior, extremist mm -hmm. ideas going to the extreme, which goes back to that whole polarity issue of we, we're going to sit over, I'm going to sit over here, you're going to sit over here. And the word that we've forgotten to even know how to use is integration. How mm. can we, one of the things I think that the universe is saying to us right now is I'm, pu I'm pulling things apart here. I'm pulling things apart so that you can bring it back together. We all need to figure out what that means for us, but the idea to integrate should never have ever been totally lost politically. I mean, and I think in terms of, we could say our political health as well as our personal health. Mm. Um, when I When I talk about these kinds of things to clients, I generally go to a biological um, suggestion, which is equilibrium. We mm -hmm. don't live at equilibrium. It is a float. It is, it is like tacking and sailing. You do a little bit of this here, a little bit of this here, and you've got positive ions and negative ions. You could make that analogy throughout Airplane, everything. Airplane, walking. And, yeah, and so this idea of where do we find our middle ground, and it doesn't appear as though anyone feels the freedom to find the middle ground. Mm. Now, depending upon what side you're on, the right thinks it's the left and the left thinks it's the right. But nonetheless, I think the, 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 what we're being shown here and our lesson is to try to integrate 
the, the dark and the light, the positive and the negative together. So in ways that when we are counseling people, if we can counsel to that level, that's what we're, we're trying to do because to be able to make the changes has to happen at the nano before, you know, as mm -hmm. above, so below, and the opposite is true. So anything that happens down here is going to have the effect elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, your question to, you know, what is it that we can do? And I know I'm speaking in, in a global way here, but in all those funny little things that we do that maybe we're, you know, having an argument with our neighbor, is there some way we can stop and say, wait a minute, we talked about that. We talked about that when I had my reading. I need to think about ways to integrate things. It's well, not when, I, when I saw the, uh, the 2000 election, red states and blue states, as soon as I saw that map, I had deja vu about the Egyptian empire, uh, upper and lower kingdom split, the Roman empire, east and west, the Mayan empire. Every time there is a split in quote unquote an empire, and you can say the United States is or isn't an empire, but as soon as you see that kind of split, it um, automatically creates something. And you know, look what happened to those empires. And so the, as soon as I saw that in 2000, I thought, oh my gosh, where are we going? But also, you know, you talked about this split in, in a certain way, and I got an image of an egg being inseminated. Mm -hmm. And when an egg is inseminated, it splits in two. Mm -hmm. And then it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies until it creates a human person. And so a lot of times we look at these negative things that are going on and, you know, we're all caught up and sucked up into all of this. And sometimes we lose sight of the whole, mm -hmm. which is that, you know, if we're going to one extreme and to the other extreme, that at some point, you know, we get to the middle or, and, and, I, and I hope this happens. I mean, my hope is that we get to this place again. And maybe that's what we needed in terms of dealing with, um, you know, the biases and the prejudices and all the other kinds of things that were, I mean, we're, we're here talking about the Me Too movement and the, you know, um, uh, black, uh, black, lives uh, matter. black Lives Matter. And, and you know, it's like all these things that had been festering for years that really were festering and didn't come to the surface. All of a sudden now, everything has come mm -hmm. to the surface. Mm -hmm. Is that astrologically, am, am I looking at that correctly? Mm. I'll say with Plutonian energy, the planet Pluto is dominating the political scene, scene now. And I'll say one thing about polarization that will make you feel a little better. There's a very famous, or was a very famous, Jungian astrologer and <laughs> psychotherapist, Alice Howell. And she says, whenever a society becomes extremely polarized, then no, a new era is about to That's begin. It. That's it. Uh, it doesn't happen just a natural flow. Some type of crisis has to take right. place but it does bring us together in the end. Um, with Pluto, Plutonian energy, because it's so strong now, uh, the symbolism of this is with, Pluto, with things that are suppressed, it's like a beach ball that's being pushed to the bottom of the pool. People are starting to feel overwhelmed and out of control because everything is changing. Some people can't keep up with the new technology. I have a friend, she's in her 40s, and she feels behind all the 20 year olds. And so all of a sudden, you start to feel out of control and that beach ball comes flying to the surface. So everything that has been re repressed mm. and controlled comes flying to the surface. So I see a lot of that. I mean, you, you, you don't know you have cockroaches until you catch them in the kitchen. And so it's, it's a time to <laughs> do something great. about <laughs> That's a great metaphor. And it's it, to the follow on to that is what you brought up at the very beginning when we first started talking, which was the Aquarian energy. Um, Aquarian energy is also known to be very um, revolutionary, rebellious energy, because how do things change? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you've, I'm mm -hmm. going to touch you, mm -hmm. sometimes you're going to have to do this a little bit, a little bit of the, the nudging to get something to move. If everything is all fine, we're not going to move into anything. Mm. And the whole point of this experiment of being a human being is to be challenged so we grow and evolve. Can I give you another good prediction? Sure. Uh, 
this country is getting ready to go to what we call its first Pluto return. Mm -hmm. Now, Pluto takes mm -hmm. 248 yes. years to go around ah. through all the signs. But coming up in a few years, it's going to be returning to where it was uh, at the... Uh, 1776? Four, uh, yes, the, uh, July 4, 1776. And I was talking with some astrologer friends, and the idea came up in that it's because we had to form our constitution at that time, this may be a time where we have to go back and mm, plug up it. all those holes yeah. 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 that are allowing uh, this fascism to present itself in this country. And it's not just in this country, yep. it's really a global effect. Yep. I know in Poland, the same thing happened there that happened in this country. People didn't like the two parties, so they didn't vote. And therefore, the ultra-conservative got in. Uh, so it's, uh, um, uh, there's a lot of changes about to take place. And uh, my feeling is, I really agree with that perspective that with the Pluto return, we will have to return to the Constitution and plug up all those holes that allow a bar and uh, um, these things to go on in Congress that are just not fair. Yeah. What's also um, coming to mind as is, is I listen to what Lynn is saying is the fact that um, you have the polarity, as Robin was laying out. One of the things I think that has made this Capricorn time so difficult is that we have forgotten that the opposite sign, cancer, is about feeling, sensitivity. We've lost the capacity to be empathetic with each other. Yeah. What did Obama say? We have an empathetic uh, empathy deficit in this country. Yeah. That, I mean, no truer words were yep. spoken. Yep. Yeah. And so if you can't, you know, uh, relate to your fellow man, right, or, or feel, how do you understand them? How do you understand what they're going through? And I remember some wisdom that my first teacher, astrology teacher, had given me, and she said, uh, the thing to remember is that no one's pain is more important than anyone else's. Mm. It doesn't matter what it is. To each and every person, their pain is their pain. Yep. And it should not be diminished or denied or you know, discounted. Well, what are we doing? When we see the kinds of leaders that have come up in so many countries around the world, and then they look to this country and we see what do we have here. Mm. And it is a worldwide, I mean, phenomena that's going on here, you know, mm. with um, upheavals in all mm -hmm. kinds of countries that didn't quite have upheavals before. Right. How does the how does the Me Too movement fit into the astrology, um, whatever the planets and the houses and things like that? How did that get? Um, become a part of this political landscape as well. Symbolically, I think that is related to what Cheryl was talking about with the Capricorn energy because um, cancer is the polarity of Capricorn. So that is how, where we all want to go to balance things out. And cancer rules mm -hmm. women and families mm -hmm. and nurturing mm -hmm. and nourishing. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, we have Capricorn, we have this very repressive government that is trying to cut and you know, take away the resources from the families and give it to the business, the Capricorn business um, archetype. And I think that the Me Too is an urge to bring that back into balance. And of course, a, a response on the part of women to feeling that repression and, and, and of course saying, Oh, we're not gonna take that anymore. Right. Pluto has a way of bringing buried stuff, like like mm -hmm. like like Lynn said, the beach ball coming out, coming springing up from the pool, and I think that 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 metaphor fits really well for the Me Too movement as well. Women, we're sick of it. Yeah. You know, each and every one of us has been putting up with this for our whole lives, and it's to me, it's very refreshing. That's one of the positive things about this, is that. We realize that we have voices too, and we can stand up collectively and say we're not taking this anymore. I, I heard on NPR the other day about you know women talking about being whistled at, going down the street, and being followed, and things like that. And you know I remember how uncomfortable that feels. Mm. I'm too old now for that to happen, but I remember how uncomfortable that is. That feeling is, or being, 
you know, the commentary and things like that. And nobody ever thought to speak up for themselves and say, I won't take this. You know, you just kind of not want to make waves and walk on. But, you know, I've had it in the business arena. I've had it with clients, you know, it's and with this movement now, it's like bringing everything to the forefront and looking. I mean, women who are talking about having been raped and never talked about it before in their lives. And, you know, it's just an incredible time for women. And I had been feeling for a long time, I was part of the movement in the 60s with, I thought, you know, women would progress in the workplace. And, and, I, mm -hmm. and I kept thinking, why aren't these young women fighting for them? You know, we spent all this time fighting, you know, in the 60s. And, you know, it's kind of like they're all just taking it. Um, and so it feels now like, okay, now we're... So you were talking about cyclical. What, is that, what does that look like? I mean, how many cyclical... Is it years? Is it planets? Is it... What is it? Every planet has a cycle, and they're all different mm -hmm. lengths. Pluto is 248 years. The lunar cycle is 28 days. So between those extremes, we have all these different cycles that are all taking place um, at the same time. And that's the complexity of astrology is how do you break that down and, and pull the pieces out and present them in a way that makes sense and can help you understand. Um, yeah. So one of the things too about um, the feminine, I remember um, being at a, in a spiritual retreat um, as the millennium came in. And this, the teacher had said that, you know, that we are now entering the millennium of the, of the two. Well, Cancer, the astrological sign, is closely associated with the moon. The moon would, you can describe as archetypal yin energy. Right. Okay, undifferentiated yin energy. And it rules mother, babies, family, breasts, young children. So giving birth, nurturing, and caring. So the millennium is the rise of feminine consciousness. And obviously, we, it's a thousand years, so we're just at the beginning. But we could also say that uh, the Uranus, the planet of awakening and awareness and revolutionary change, when it entered Aries in 2010, everyone became conscious of the fact that, you know what, I'm here too. <laughs> what about me? So then that you know, energy of awakening everyone's sense of I am here and I matter as well, uh, you could say we had the Occupy movements spring mm -hmm. up here. Oh, yeah, right. We, right. We also had um, young people who were the engines of, of the uh, Arab Spring. It was, right. they were all young, okay, and not even under 30. And then we have, I believe it was in 2018, Chiron, the uh, wound, the symbolism is the wounded healer, okay, uh, entered the sign of Aries. So almost as if, this time frame, these eight years that Chiron will move through Aries, offers an opportunity for healing of the f sacred masculine, which male, female, or have both contain yin yang, right? Yin yang in male, yin yang in feminine. And so the Me Too movement, in my mind, embodies the Chiron in Aries energy as women are speaking up. They're finding the courage to say, here's what's happened to me and I am going to say it, and I am going to not um, hold myself back or feel bad anymore because you violated me. So is Chiron a planet? It's considered a minor planet. Oh. It was discovered in 1977. Oh. And, and it's the, it was discovered and it was thought at that time to be the first in the specific class of uh, celestial bodies called centaur because of the extreme elliptic uh, orbit that it has. Oh, okay? okay. Now they've renamed it to a minor planet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to add because I think it's so fascinating. Um, when you were speaking originally, and then you added what what you just spoke of, the whole Me Too movement really had a really big component of men involved there too. Correct. There were a lot of men that kept saying themselves, "But I have lived this life. I have been the supporter. I believe in this, or I'm going to stand up and be the person that's going to." to say no more to, to my fellow um, Y chromosome folks. <laughs> um, but it's also the idea of it also is, you know, we've just recently left the age of Pisces in mm. astrology. There's a 2600 year of the astrology wheel moving. And Piscean energy was all that energy that we needed for such a long time because 
we felt as humans that we needed this link between the divine and us. So we, we put a person, a king, an emperor in between, or we put a priest between us. That is at its end, or it's, it has ended. It's, we don't know, but likely this has been going on for about a hundred years into Aquarius. You know, um, we all heard about Age of Aquarius when we all went to see hair in the right, 60s. Right, right. But it's this idea of opening up, which also is Aquarian energy is a little bit um, um, androgynous energy. It doesn't mm -hmm. sit with, it sits in solidarity. I like to think of the energy as we stand there on the picket line for no more guns in school, and you're going to be there with everyone around you, and you could physically touch them, but you're not friends. You're just standing for a, a philosophy, a thought, and you're standing in solidarity. So this is that time of solidarity for men with women to, to bring mm -hmm. the divine feminine and the divine masculine back well, together. I was wonder well, that's why I was asking about cyclical, because I wondered if this time with the Me Too movement had any kind of cyclical relationship to women getting the vote. You know, ah, it, 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 are we coming back around to something? That was, when did 20, women, 19, it was 1920. Yeah, in the 20s. So you had Neptune and Leo, you had Pluto and Cancer, I remember that. And I think uh, Uranus was in Aries then. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yes. So, and, and 1920s was the time when women, like in the movie industry, had more power. Mm -hmm. They were much more, uh, you know, valued. Um, they were paid equal to men or more. And so, you know, this whole shit is, and that's why I asked, is it cyclical? Because it feels like we keep coming around over and over and over, you know, this, well, the 60s with- Well, it would have been cyclical in the fact that Uranus was in Aries at that time, at some point in the 20s, I know. And so in the 2010 to, uh, was it 2018, I think, we had Uranus, uh, no, 2010 to 20, yeah, 2018. We had Uranus in um, in Aries again. So it, well, that's an 84 year cycle. So it closely correlates to the human lifespan, generally speaking, 84 years. So yes, in that sense, that planet did come back. We did have Pluto uh, come in the opposite plant sign of Capricorn now, but back in the 20s, it was in Cancer. And remember, Cancer rules women, right? right? Doesn't that make sense yes. for everything that you're right. talking and about? And right. Uranus's revolution and breaking mm -hmm. through. And what did the suffragettes you know, do? Right. They broke, they broke through. Can we go back to a time that is equal to this? Um, is there a time yeah. backwards? I think of two cycles. You know, we're talking about Uranus and Aries. Um, when it was Aries before, like in the 20s and 30s, it was a, a, a real shift for women because of one woman, Amelia Earhart, mm. wearing pants, right. having a short hair, right. comfortable clothes. And, uh, and now we have the Me Too movement as when Uranus was in Aries. But there's something else connected with women and a cycle. Uh, the Jupiter-Saturn uh, conjunction in air signs. Mm. Uh, the last time it was, because it's about to occur again, the last time it occurred was in the early 80s. And a woman married into the monarchy, Princess Diana, oh. and she changed the monarchy. Mm. Now we have another woman right, marrying right, in the monarchy, right, right. and Very it is good. changing the monarchy yes. completely. Wow. Very good okay. Point. So Very good point. I love all these sick look. You know, yes. yes. I wondered about all this as I see things, you know, happening again. It would be interesting to go back and see when the, you know, Mayan Empire fell, and actually the Mayan Empire didn't fell fall. It, they moved to Florida, and <laughs> <laughs> we now know from archaeology. But, you know, when the Egyptian Empire split between Upper and Lower and the Roman Empire, and it would be interesting to see if that is a cyclical pattern as mm -hmm. well. You know, now we're looking at red states and blue states, and what is that going to mean for the United States in terms of where that, you know, are we going to be split up into whatever, you know, two empires or whatever is going to happen? I mean, it would be interesting to go back in history and see about that. One wow. of the things, oh, I'm, I'll just, this will be really quick. One of the things now, I mean, I have no idea what was going on in the Mayan and the Roman, but we have computer uh, programs now that can take you back mm. thousands of years mm. so you can look at those uh. cycles. 
Got so, it. you know, it's much easier to do research astrologically. And if, if I knew how important history would be, I would have majored in history instead of economics, which I can't <laughs> even balance my checkbook, but by God, I could pass the economics test. I would study history because history really tells you about those cycles. Molly, sorry I interrupted. No uh, worries. <laughs> What were you going to say? I, oh, I, speaking of history, I was going to say another cycle that um, is, has always been a little disturbing to me is Neptune is in Pisces right now, as we mentioned. Mm -hmm. but Neptune's next stop is Aries. Mm. That's, that's still a few years off, but the next place Neptune's going to go after this is Aries. And the last time Neptune, Neptune was in Aries, we had the Civil War. Civil War. Oh, brother. It's, it's interesting yeah. you brought that up because when you were speaking, immediately I was trying to recall where was Neptune around the Civil War. It, Neptune the, was in Aries. And, and I'll tell you one thing because I did look at this. Um, uh, every time since its discovery that Uranus has gone into Gemini, uh, we fight a great battle for democracy, mm -hmm. and that is the American Revolution. Right. In the mm -hmm. Civil War, we had Uranus in uh, 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 Gemini and Neptune in Aries, and that Neptune in yes. a uh, Aries, uh, Uranus in Gemini it's will crop up. up again yes. in the 1930s. Well, oh my gosh, we could keep on going, ladies. I really appreciate <laughs> this. We could do another whole show. So uh, you have spent this interesting hour talking about astrology and I want to thank my guests and please join us again next week or go to our website what wisewomenwant.com and wise is spelled with a z and look at all of our tv shows that we've had over the years they are uploaded onto youtube you can see this show and many other shows that we've done in the past and we hope you'll join us again and thank you for your um continued support throughout the year. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Daria Brzezinski, and we'll see you again.